As we continue our week-long series, Spring into Summer, we're looking at how to travel safely. The TSA screened 1.8 million passengers yesterday. That's the most in more than 14 months. Let's go to Newark Liberty International Airport in New Jersey. Two of our own experts are inside a United Airlines plane. That's Dr. John LaPook and our senior travel advisor, Peter Greenberg. They're both wearing masks to follow United's policy. Good morning to you both. John, let me start with you. Um, masks are still required for fully vaccinated passengers on planes. Why is that? Uh, good morning, Anthony. It's basically to protect people who are either unvaccinated or vaccinated, but for some reason they didn't get an adequate immune response to the vaccine. For example, somebody who's immunocompromised. In that scenario, if you're inside of a plane and people aren't wearing masks, if somebody doesn't wear a mask and they're infected, they pose a danger to other people. Peter, every state has different uh, restrictions at this point uh, on COVID. So what should you keep in mind as you're traveling? Well, first thing, you can always go to the CDC's own website to see what each state is doing. But the reality, Anthony, is that very few states have the resources of the staff to enforce those guidelines, let alone monitor them. We're morphing into an honor system where individual personal responsibility and situational awareness is key. So I'm less concerned about flying to a destination right now than I am about the behavior of the people in that destination. Where would you suggest that people go to look for global travel as far as what each country, continent, state is really requiring or doesn't have open yet? What, where do you go to know? Well, what you look for, of course, is their own websites from their own consulates. They'll give you state-of-the-art, cutting-edge information, but keep in mind it changes almost hourly. Greece opened yesterday, Italy's opening today, France may be opening later this week, and the same thing applies in the rest of the 48 continental U.S. Well, in order to get there, John, most people have to get on a plane, and people are still very worried about the ventilation. Can you talk about the ventilation, how safe it is? I think many people, by people I mean me, many people need reassurance about the <laughs> ventilation on the planes. It's still very scary to me. You know Hi, Gail, you should be reinsured. I did a deep dive on this. And ventilation on planes like this is excellent. About half of the air comes from the outside. It's combined with recirculated air. It all goes through HEPA filters that get rid of viruses, other organisms. It comes from the ceiling down to the, and near the floor. It comes out of vents. Uh, if you want a little bit of a trick, you open up the air vent uh, above you, have it flow right on you to help disperse air. But, you know, the air is completely exchanged about every three minutes, which is better than in some, you know, medical settings. It's so it's funny. Safe. First thing I do, John, is turn off the vent because the sound bothers me. And that, that air blowing down on me is annoying. I don't annoying. like the feeling but, also. But, okay, turn on that's the good. Vent. Okay, you, good you advice. Vent. Dr. Greenberg, I'd love to ask why Delta is the only airline that is still having an empty middle seat and why other airlines feel that they can proceed at full capacity. Well, thank you first for calling me Dr. Greenberg. <laughs> I'm gonna hold that against Dr. LaPook later. But Sorry, the Dr. bottom line is Delta is, but Delta is no longer blocking the middle seat. They stopped actually April 30th. And in fact, think about this. I'm standing here only about three feet away from Dr. LaPook. That's not six feet of separation. Mm -hmm. Airline cabins and, and social distancing are mutually exclusive. So right now they're filling every seat on every available plane. Peter, talk about travel trends yeah. that you're seeing. And especially, we were all sitting at the table talking about how hard it is and how expensive it is to get a rental car. Talk about the travel trends, please. Sure. Well, you talk about the rental cars. It's bad. I just, I just guessed on a, uh, an estimate for a rental car today in Florida. It's $441 oh. a day. And that wow. doesn't include... And that doesn't include the drop-off charges, the mileage caps, and God forbid you have to let them refuel the car. It could be as much as $11 a gallon. So what you need to do is rent a car midweek. Do not rent it at the airport. You'll be able to return it there with no drop-off charge. But on trips of under 500 miles, do yourself a favor. It's BYOC. Bring your own car. Peter, how crowded is it, are, are the airlines expected it's going to be this summer? Are we close to getting back to, to pre-pandemic levels? Every one of the planes on every airline is now unparked. They're in the skies. The airlines have added 170 new routes in the United States alone. And in many cases, they're all outdoors destinations, close to state and national parks. 
The one example I'll give you is Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. They've just added 200,000 seats to that airport. It's the fastest growing airport in the United States. Now, do they have 200,000 rooms in Bozeman? They don't. So it may be inexpensive to get there. Watch your wallet as to how expensive it's going to be to be there. Dr. Lupu, quickly, John, what's the one thing, the most important thing people should bring when they travel? Best thing to bring is the knowledge that you've been vaccinated. Ah, and on top of that, ah. your common sense, okay? okay? You know, figure out what the risk is in certain areas. So, you know, the potential Achilles heel of the CDC guidelines is you're in an indoor setting, the ventilation's not great, it's crowded, and there are some people there who are not wearing masks. Now, mm. is that person who's not wearing masks, potentially they could be infected, Okay. Not, not vaccinated, and a potential danger to, to um, infect other people. So in that setting, I think especially if you're immunocompromised, if you're at increased yeah. risk, you should either try to stay away from those settings or get the best possible mask you can. And I think it's not unreasonable in that setting, if you have to be indoors, to wear an N95 or right. something equivalent to that. All right, All right. common sense, always the best we weapon. Dr. John LaPook, Peter Greenberg, thank you both.